Tim, uh, the market performance to start with, what did you make of it? Very disappointing day on the market, actually. Uh, I think the market action today really just showed that we were waiting for that RBA decision at 2.30. We we're gradually going up into the positive territory throughout the morning. We gained around a third of a percent. And as you can see on the graph behind me, you can see that the share market just took a massive hit at 2.30 when the RBA decided to leave rates on hold and not cut. So really we saw a big bounce in the Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar was actually holding up quite well ahead of what the market was expecting to be a rate cut. It was hovering around 107.2 US cents, bounced up above 107.8 US cents after the announcement. So the Australian market today, we saw materials were struggling a little bit all day, but certainly after that RBA decision, we saw materials fall deeper into the red. We saw the market move towards more defensive sectors such as healthcare, telecoms and utilities all outperforming today. Uh, energy stocks today actually performed not too badly. We saw oil fall last night, but it actually did rise a little in Asian trade today. Uh, also driven by uranium miners, which performed quite well today, the likes of Paladin. So the market was certainly looking forward to an interest rate cut today. The, that's what the market was sort of looking at this morning. Uh, certainly would have had a positive effect on the Australian dollar, would have weighed the Australian dollar down a little bit. Certainly something that the, Australia, that the market has been concerned about. But in the end, we finished down around half a percent. Interesting to note the reaction of the Aussie dollar as well. I've read a note from BNP Paribas post the announcement suggesting a dollar fifteen US is on the cards. Well, certainly without the interest rate cut today, there's the immediate downward pressure uh, that was possible on the Australian dollar has now been eased without that rate cut. Uh, I suppose at the moment, the other major downward pressures on the Aussie dollar that could push the Australian dollar lower would be negative sentiment coming out of Europe. A turnaround, mm. things have been coming a little bit more positive out of Europe, despite this continuing, uh, this continuing Greece debacle of, uh, over agreement to austerity for their next bailout package. But other than that, the, uh, the, the sentiment coming out of Europe has been a bit better. And for the Aussie dollar to take a fall now after the interest rates have been on hold, uh, obviously there's the possibility of the Reserve Bank cutting further, either uh, cutting rates next month at the March meeting, but it would be an, a significant turnaround in negative sentiment uh, coming from Europe that would be downward pressure. So other than that, it looks like the Australian dollar has got some positive momentum. It certainly has performed very well over January, gaining around six or seven cents over the month. So certainly on an upward trajectory at the moment. If the focus was on the RBA, very much tomorrow is going to be on BHP. With that in mind, what are your expectations? Certainly, BHP will be big news tomorrow, not only because it is such a big weight on our market, but also because of how diversified BHP is across all different sectors of mining. So that's going to be a good indication in to the materials sector itself. So we're probably looking for uh, December half profits uh, are probably going to fall. Uh, net profit after tax is probably going to come in around $10 billion, $10 billion or a little bit less, which is going to be about an 8% fall from the previous corresponding period. Uh, in terms of sectors, iron ore will be a standout. We've seen very positive production results from BHP from their iron ore division and also some positives on uh, as increasing iron ore prices. And also their coal division is likely to be another positive for their results. That's including coking and energy coal, uh, as we're seeing strong demand for coal at the moment. Now, um, aluminium, certainly a sector which will be weak. Uh, that's going to likely result in a loss in uh, earnings before interest tax, uh, loss of around $60 million, possibly. So petroleum, uh, petroleum sector will also be of interest. We've seen BHP making acquisitions in the US in the area of petroleum, including PetroHawk. Now, US gas prices have been lower, so this is uh, likely to be a bit of a drag on their petroleum business. Uh, base metals division also probably going to take a hit. Uh, we've seen lower production of copper from BHP recently, which is likely to affect that result. Now, we saw some news last week from uh, BHP that they're moving around 155 workers from their nickel division. Their nickel division, they are slowing down their production, so this is likely to be only a break-even type result. So with CapEx very strong over the next five years for BHP, somewhere in the vicinity of $80 billion. That's likely to underpin organic growth for BHP. BHP is very cheap at these current levels. Price to earnings ratios only around 9.8 times at the moment, which is well below the 15-year average. So certainly the market will be looking forward to this result tomorrow.